You know, the more I think about it, we always take the resolution of modern day cameras for granted. From non-colored black and white to full-on color, from square resolution to rectangle resolution, 480p to 4K, we always take a lot of this stuff for granted. So for today's video, I want to take you all on a trip to the past and experiment with a little piece of technology that was released just about an entire decade ago and see if it could still hold up even to this very day. So with that all said, let's begin the video. This right here, my friends, is the Sony Handycam, or what's more complicatedly titled, the DCR DVD 650. The Handycam brand of Sony cameras have actually been around since the 80s, but according to this production sticker right here on the 650, it says it was manufactured sometime in April of 2009, making this thing an entire decade old, which is very fascinating. There's a bunch of stickers and advertisers all over the camera talking about what benefits you have using this camera. So it's got 60x optical zoom, 2000x digital zoom, a wide LCD meaning 16x9, hybrid movie recording, DVD plus memory stick. There's a lot of weird stuff on here and I'm gonna get to a lot of it later. Opening this view here on the side shows that it does have a card slot as well as a USB port, which is not only the same port that was on the two other cameras that I discussed before, but it's also on the Blue Yeti microphone. It's a pretty Pretty common port and I can understand why since it's pretty small and compact so I could see why people would rather use that port instead of a full-on USB port. Turning this thing on shows a very interesting resolution that is obviously not seeable on the camera but again gonna get into that later. There's actually two ways of viewing what this camera's seeing. One is the wide LCD screen, which is actually one of the main advertisements here, but closing the screen will actually show it on the little viewfinder that's also on the camera. Controlling the camera is also very simple, with turning it on and off and switching from video to camera mode being controlled by this silver knob with a green top. Pressing the top and turning it to the right turns on the camera, and while the camera's on, turning it to the right again switches it from video mode to camera mode. We also have two separate buttons from taking pictures and recording videos, which is pretty weird, but eh, it's nice that they kind of have it so that way they could divide the two. And the LCD view has a record button on the bottom left. Whew, all right, so now that we got just about all the things that this camera could do, let's discuss about what formats it takes and what the resolution of the camera is. The thing that really surprises me is that the memory stick thing isn't talking about USB drives, which would be pretty weird for a camera in 2009, but what it's actually talking about is that it uses an actual format just simply titled memory stick. It's not an SD card or anything. In fact, the thing is actually too small for an SD card. So this is a very weird format, but don't worry because they actually give you another type of format, DVDs. Oh, sorry, did I say DVDs? I meant mini DVDs. This is incredibly weird for a digital camera. These things are just about as small as a GameCube game. In fact, I could actually even put a GameCube game in one of these things. But what's even more weird about this is that mini DVDs are just about as popular and in circulation as regular DVDs and even Blu-rays. In fact, I could actually go to Best Buy right now and buy mini DVDs if I wanted to. But all these formats don't really matter since again, you could just use the USB port. Although the video itself is crisp and I didn't see any noise on it, which is that weird particle stuff that you see in most cameras, the quality itself is 720 by 480. And that's kind of interesting because like I just said, the video itself is really good quality. This is actually quite surprising to see on a 480p camera. And as if the memory sticks and mini DVDs weren't weird enough, the videos themselves are MPG files. I couldn't find a way to change the file format, but that doesn't really matter since these files do actually work on Vegas, unlike MKV files. Oh, and speaking of nothing mattering, my first ever video test I did on this was me recording a video of Bohemian Rhapsody at 60fps. Well, I thought it looked 60fps, it was actually quite smooth when I was recording it on the camera, but according to the file itself it says it's in 30fps. So now that we're all a little bit familiar about this camera, I'm going to take this little thing out on a test drive and I'm going to be recording the same place with three different cameras. The first obviously being the 2009 Handycam camera, the next being the Canon Vixia HFR70, which is the camera I mainly use, and the final one, of course, being my iPhone. 
I'm gonna be recording in three different locations and see if it's actually okay enough to record with a 10 year old camera in 2019. Now before I start the test, I'm going to predict that this camera is actually going to have at least some good quality for it. Sure, it's 480p, but it's actually a really good looking 480p at that. I honestly think it would be okay to use a camera like this in 2019, but we, again, still haven't tried the test out. So I'm going to be recording with this thing and see if it goes well in the end. Let's start things off simple with the area I'm recording on, my desk, with a big Mario figure, cause why not? So, this is what it looks like on the iPhone. This is what it looks like on the camera I use now, the Canon Vixa HFR70. And this is what it looks like on the Sony Handycam. Now while we're here, I guess we could test out the zooming abilities on this little thing, cause this thing does have 2000x digital zoom, so let's just zoom in on Mario's eye here. As you can see, it actually... Ooh, 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 it's blurring, it's blurring. There we go. That is not bad zoom at all. Like, for 2009? That's pretty impressive. Now, the quality itself, uh, it's not bad. I mean, I wouldn't really use it for videos nowadays, but for 2009, this is really, this is really good. I like this. I decided to also add a side-by-side -side view in here, not because I wanted to get this video to 10 minutes, but because I wanted to show some more comparisons so that way you could decide which one had the better results. I don't know what's going on with my iPhone here because it usually gives some pretty good results, but I'm seeing a lot of noise in the video, which isn't really that visible on both the Canon and Sony cameras. But either way, in my opinion, the ones that had the best results were of course the Canon and Sony cameras. But if I'm gonna be completely honest on which one I would pick, I would pick the Canon camera. Another area I decided to test these cameras at is Walmart, specifically here, this Nintendo Switch area. This is my iPhone's recording, and as you can see, this is where the iPhone actually shines. I don't know why it hates my room's lighting so much and causing it to have that noise, but if you look at this video, there isn't really any noise. In fact, this one might honestly be the best out of the bunch. And the same can be said for my Canon camera. The video here is just so crisp and colorful, I just really like it. And for the Sony camera, and not so much. Even though this is a Nintendo Switch display, the camera makes it look like a Nintendo Wii display. But that could be considered a good thing for some people if they want to get that whole retro early 2000s feel. So if you want to get that kind of feeling, just get yourself one of these cameras and there you go. And for one more test, I decided to go over to the Arts and Crafts or Crayola section of Walmart. Here is the recording from my iPhone. Here is the recording from the Canon camera. And here's the recording from the Sony camera. Although this camera's 10 years old, I'm really impressed with the stuff that it could pick up. If someone were to show me a video that was recording using this camera that was made in 2019, I wouldn't really complain to be honest. So again, here's some comparisons between all of the recording takes that I did. Most of the ones that I find the best are just my own personal opinions. Some of you might actually prefer the Sony camera over the Canon camera. So why don't you go and tell me in the comments, which ones did you find the best? So now here is the main question. Can you still use these 10 year old cameras in 2019 to make good videos with? Yes and no. And here's why I say that. If this is your only option and you don't have enough money to go and get a new one, I would say go right ahead. In fact, that would be the best course of action. Just use what you have on hand. But if you already have a camera better than this, or if you have a phone with a camera better than this, or if you have enough money to go and get a new one, I wouldn't say so. In fact, if I want to be honest, I would never use my phone as a camera because personally, th this is what I just use to talk to people and play games on. I don't want to use this as a main camera due to interruptions and things like that. It's just very complicated. And not to mention, like I just said, the file formats on my iPhone, since they can record in 4K, don't actually aren't actually compatible with Vegas, which really sucks. So yeah, all in all, if this was your only option, go right ahead, but if you can get a new one, don't go right ahead. That's all I really need to say about this little thing. But I want to hear what you think. What are your thoughts about these 10-year-old cameras? And what was the first ever camera you ever had? Tell me in the comments. And if you have any other suggestions for what you want me to talk about next, and if you have any fan that you want to submit to me, you can submit them all via Twitter, Discord, or in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this video, hit the like button, and if you're new, the subscribe button, and the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a video. And if you want to donate to me, you can go over to my Ko-fi page in the description below. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you 
in the next video. Bye.